Do you ever ask yourself why you might be carrying certain clubs in the bag? And in this case, a three wood. Or perhaps you've got some clubs in the bag that are actually gathering dust and wondering quite why you're carrying them. Maybe a five wood, for example. Well, in today's video, I hope to provide you some data that gives you some answers to those questions. And uh, do you in fact need one in the bag, two in the bag, or perhaps none of them? Now, the first question you need to ask yourselves is why you are carrying certain clubs in the bag. So for me, three wood in the bag, why would I have it there? Well, to play maybe on sort of tight par fours when I'm not feeling so good with the driver. But then after that, it's really a club that I don't get a great deal of use from. And am I making a big mistake? And then the next question is the five would exactly the same question. Why have I got this in the bag? Well, for me, it would be again, tight par fours, definitely play it there. Maybe look to play this a little bit more from the, a fairway lie, which I wouldn't be too keen on doing with that three wood. But the question is, how do they perform any differently? And am I making a big mistake having one of these in the bag, both or none whatsoever? And let me tell you, data is already collected and there's a big surprise in store. Right, so I'm gonna kick things off indoors, in the studio, in the drive, we're gonna collect some data, find out what that tells us, but maybe then more importantly, I'm gonna transfer that out onto the golf course and see if we learn any more. Is data gonna be reality when we get out on the golf course? Right, so really interesting data collected there, and trust me, you wanna stick around to see what that data tells us. But like I said, what I wanna know is what happens out here on the golf course. Does that data ring true? And if it does, well, there's a big decision to make and a pretty obvious one. Right, so that was in fact a five wood that I've just played off the second tier at Carden Park. And the test that we're gonna do out here on course is quite simple. I'm gonna hit each club side by side from the same tee box. And we're simply gonna find where they landed on the fairway and what impact they had on overall results in playing holes. So what you've seen is the five wood, now watch the three wood, pulled a little bit more down the left, not as straight as I hit the five wood. The question is, where did they finish in terms of on the fairway? Let's go and find out. Right, before we get a downpour, I'll try and briefly get this in. We've looked at a second scenario and that's playing from the rough. And as you can see, they're both pretty, they're sitting up quite nice and not nestled down. But the three with your watch is a very piercing, penetrating ball flight. Now, arguably a good ball flight in certain conditions and when obstacles are in the way, let's say. So in this case, we've actually rolled on, you can see probably another 15 yards further again, ended up in the bunker, very low ball flight. Then watch the five wood and the difference in the ball flight is hugely different. Far greater than the loft difference suggests at least. And we've come up just behind me, just short. No ball is better than the other in terms of how it's got from where we started to how we finished. But ultimately the question would be, or you need to ask yourself and I'm asking myself, which ball flight did I prefer? If that ball is nestled down just that little bit further, again, which one do I fancy out of there? Would I be in the three wood or would I be going from the five wood? And for me, the answer is undoubtedly the five would be the club for me to choose at least anyway. Right, interesting off the fifth tee, we go with three wood first. Now, okay, this wasn't a great strike, a little bit of uh, left to right in it, a bit cutty. It's come to rest five feet from where I am now, just hung on to the fairway. But you see the five wood has, uh, well, this time around gained 15 yards on the three wood. Again, significantly different ball flight, I suppose arguably a significantly different strike as well in terms of the quality of swing. But once again, not huge differences between where those two balls finished up, each with a different ball flight, each with a different way of getting A to B. And again, which would you prefer? Right, so if you wanna get involved in the comment section, then this is how to do so. I simply wanna know, are you playing either a three wood, a five wood, or both? What are your thoughts? What are your findings from out on the golf course? Are they the same as mine? And that basically is, at this moment in time, not a huge amount to separate them in terms of uh, their distance traveled, but they get there in completely different ways. And I'm questioning, do I need uh, either of them in the bag, both of them, or maybe just one of them? Right, before we talk about these two shots and where they landed, let's hop back a hole and onto the sixth hole, one of my favorites here at Carden Park. 
lot of uh, well risk or reward the tighter you go to that left hand side the closer you are to the hole so we started off with three wood i said to hannah it's probably the best shot i've hit on that hole for it's quite some shot, time huh? lovely bit of shape started off down the right and drew it That's back as close as i was prepared to to that water and then the five wood and uh, in all honesty it was matched in terms of the quality of swing and strike and again a bit of right to left shape Probably finished close to the hole due to the fact that it was a tighter line that I took, but ultimately, as you can see where they come to rest, not a great deal to separate them yet again. And then we move on to this hole. Really tough tee shot. Ball flight could not be any different. Three wood, which finished up there, you can see has a really low ball flight. Landed, I would suggest, probably 40 yards short of where it actually finished up. And then you watch the five wood. And I just cannot believe out here on the course just how much difference when we talk about data later on in the video, you'll know what I mean, but I can't believe how much higher the ball flight is visibly out here on the course compared to what data says. This ball was pretty much landed where, or finished where it landed. And again, comment to Hannah just off camera was, this is okay playing in the summer, that's just got 40 yards worth of roll. If we played these same conditions and it's soggy underfoot, the natural fact the three wood stops down there and the five wood, well, that wouldn't have been affected. Anyway, interesting stuff out on the course. We've got 115 into the flag. Let's see if we could have made any good from this, uh, this position. I'm really happy with the strike. I'm still trying to grind in this new swing, but that's down the left-hand side. There's no use zooming in, and because we pulled it a little bit left. Well, I wasn't happy with that wedge shot, so we're going to have to have another go from where the three would landed. That's a better swing hand. Didn't force it. It's centre of the green. That's quite a bit better. So, unfortunately, we cut a little bit short there, and our summary will be done indoors. As you can see, we're absolutely poured down at Carden Park, and that was the end of our filming for the day. And essentially, what I found out on the course was what I found in terms of dry ball data that I collected earlier on in the day, but we'll go through it very briefly. And if you take a look up on screen now, what you're going to see is the numbers I collected first of all with the five wood. The interesting bit for me is just go down to the averages and uh, 205 carry, 135 ball speed, spin rate of 3.5, launch angle really important, 11.6, and a descent angle of 37.8 degrees. Then I'm going to throw up straight away the three wood numbers, 206 carry, 139 ball speed, 2724 spin, launching at 8.6, 27 degrees land angle. Now the important factors for me there are the carry distance was almost identical, the spin number was different and the launch angle was different, as was the descent angle. And what it basically means is, as we've seen out on the course, that the three wood is a lot flatter of a ball flight. When it lands, it will potentially run on a lot further because it's a lot uh, less steep of a descent angle. And as we said throughout the video, what you've got to ask yourself is what, is, what do you want from each of the clubs? But for me, my summary is quite brief. I am literally dumping the three wood from my bag for good. They're just not an option that I get a lot of use out of in terms of a golf club in the bag. It is so one dimensional that it just doesn't serve enough purpose for me. Not when I can get very similar results from the five wood. And in fact, I prefer the results from the five wood. I prefer the higher ball flight. I prefer the lofted address that gives me a bit more confidence. Just everything about the five wood is preferable and then you've got a bit of flexibility in terms of where you can play it like I said I've no problem playing it from the tee in the same positions I'd use a three wood from the tee on a par four but then when you're playing from the fairway or from out of the rough I would much prefer the loft that the five wood presents so for me it's an absolute no-brainer and I just think for you ask yourself that same question we've done similar videos before I've never seen it so um, clear cut if you like in terms of both data and visible on the course where the difference that the ball flight produces from the five wood for me means it's an absolute no brainer. I just thought the question I was about to ask you was what happens with your club, your three wood, if you've got one in the bag, just have a think about how many times you actually use it. And would you be more, or would there be more benefit in choosing a higher lofted fairway wood, perhaps even a four wood, five wood, even that seven wood again, maybe an option in terms of uh, giving you 
more flexibility in that golf bag and just making life a little bit easier. Right, as ever, that's only my opinion. You might think things completely different than I do, and by all means, stick your comments in the section down below. I love to get a conversation going between all you golfers out there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.